Good morning all. Today I fancy doing something quite simple really. Uh, so I thought I'd just build a kit. Um, this kit is the Cicada machine, or is it Cicada? I don't know, I'll have to check that. Uh, and it just makes the sound of the Cicada, or the Cicada. Now this kit was very kindly supplied by icstation.com. So let's start by taking a look at this on their website. So here it is on IC Station's website, uh, icstation.com. It's item ID 10,880, and it's a cicada or cicada, we don't know yet. Sound analog circuit suite multi vibrator DIY kits, high and low frequency music signal simulation electronic kits. Uh, it's just $2.65, which I think is quite reasonable since you get such a huge speaker. So let's take a look at what's inside this Cicada Cicada kit. I'm going to have to get to the bottom of this uh, pronunciation thing soon. Well, you get this enormous speaker. Now, normally you'd associate a large speaker with uh, low frequencies. So uh, does the Cicada Cicada have um, a low frequency component to the sound? Oh, well, that's interesting. The circuit just looks like um, a multivibrator, a stable, a couple of LEDs there. So that creates an oscillator, but I don't think it's going to break that oscillation up. It's just going to be a continuous oscillation. This looks like it's kind of an amplifier sort of thing to get a nice loud sound. Eight ohm speaker. So in the multivibrator, we've got a couple of transistors. These are NPNs, 9014s. Uh, in the amplifier, we've got an NPN transistor here and a PNP transistor, which is the uh, final current providing stage for the loudspeaker. Uh, seems to be a bit of feedback here, that 10K and the 0.022 microfarads, which is 22 nanofarads, seems to be feeding from the output back to the input. It'd be quite interesting to leave that out initially and then add it in later just to see what the effect is. Right, I just want to get this cicada cigada business sorted out so that I don't have any uh, ambiguity going forwards. Now I found this uh, Cambridge Dictionary page and there are two buttons, UK. Cicada. Cicada, you see, and US. Cicada. Oh, yeah, that doesn't help at all. So let's start with the low profile components, which are the resistors. Uh, there are no diodes in here. And I'm going to work by a sort of process of elimination because there are some interesting values here whose colours should be readily identifiable. So let's get in really close. So like this one, for example, 68K, uh, blue, grey. Probably have to put the magnifying glass on that. Uh, so you can see the blue, the grey, and then black, red is a bit like the old orange. So yeah, that's definitely 68K. So that can go there. Now there are a couple of 82Ks here, one there, one there. So I think that's these. 82 is gray, red. So from the left, gray, red. And then once again, black, red is uh, the multiplier. Actually, no, black isn't the multiplier. So it's 820 and then times 10 to the two, which is the uh, red on the right there. So those are 82K, so I can put those down there. Now there are a couple of 1Ks on the board there. These are a little bit more tricky because it's just all browns and blacks. Uh, so red from the left, brown, black, black, brown. So it's one, zero, zero, times 10 to the one gives you another zero. So that's a thousand. So these are 1Ks. And the last one in that row or that column is a 51K. So we're looking for something with some green on it. And uh, here it is, 51K. Focus! One of these days, I think I'm going to go out and get myself a, a Sony RX100 Mark V because from what I can see, let's get these resistors all the same way around. Go for a bit more neatness on this kit. Yeah, from what I can tell, the uh, RX100 Mark V has world-class focus. It has an extremely intelligent autofocus which 
rarely gets anything wrong. Now these were 82, weren't they? So I think that could be the camera of choice for uh, a YouTuber who wants focus to work every time absolutely bang on correct. Identifying colors on the outer edge of the board. Keep it nice and consistent. So I'll poke these through the hole. If I get the, um, the bend radius right, they'll probably hold themselves in. And these two uh, are the 1Ks. And uh, there's a 10K over here. So that's gone in as well. That's uh, brown, black, black, red. So that's 10,000. Right, those are all in. So let's flip this over and get them soldered. So a uh, blue sponge today with a picture of a resistor in it. Not a very good one. Admittedly, I didn't put enough zigzags on it, but uh, yeah, resistor, why not? So I've uh, anchored the board down on top of the resistor so that they're all held in place. Uh, a couple of bits of blue tack here. Uh, just waiting for the iron to warm up. When it's ready and I'm ready to solder, I'll probably bring the camera down and we'll get in a bit closer. Right, let's see how we go. Now the camera is only about three or four inches above the board, so it might get in my way a little bit. The iron doesn't seem like it's really fully warm yet, but it's okay. The solder's flowing and the joints are acceptably good. Okay, let's do that resistor up there. Now I've put the 10K and I said I wasn't going to do that because I wanted to see what this circuit sounded like with without the feedback, but I think I'm okay because the 10K um, is in series with this 0 0.022 microfarad capacitor. So if I don't put the capacitor in, then I won't have that feedback. And let's try the other side of these resistors. These all look like they're on a common sort of ground area. Oh, actually, I seem to remember on the multivibrator there were lots of resistors tied to positive, so this is probably a common positive area. I've got difficulty getting my iron in there now. Yes, it really won't go through there. No, I have to come in from this side on this one. And I might have to tip this round a bit. Let's come in from this side. And now just that one at the top, which I think I can get to like that. Good. Yeah, that's good. So clip all these leads off with my semi-magnetized wire cutters. And uh, save those in a little pot. It's hard to tell whether these are sticking to the wire cutters because they're slightly magnetic or because the ends of these wires are sticky where they've been in the uh, the bandolier, the sort of self-adhesive paper that uh, they come attached to. Hard to tell. Right, let's get all those wires off. Good, right, now we're ready for the next components. So I think transistors next.